Welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Chelsea Bussemeyer. Thanks for joining me today, actually in my kitchen, not in my workshop. Usually I film these from my workshop, but today it's I'm kind of in the middle of moving things around and it's a little bit uh, too chaotic and I don't have access to my table space. So we're gonna use my kitchen table. So all of you seamstresses out there that cut things out on your kitchen table, I'm joining you today. I've done that for a lot of years, even before I had my cutting table or even cut things out on the floor and it works just as well. Um, so we're gonna move on to the episode here right away. But first, I wanted to just let you know, if you haven't heard yet, on uh, tomorrow actually, on Thursday, I'm teaching the Flat Pattern Technique Boot Camp. So this boot camp is for anyone who's ever wished that there was a quicker and easier way to get a good handle on fit uh, to understand if this pattern is actually going to fit your body, where there might be uh, adjustments needed or hiccups and how to adjust them uh, more quickly and easier so that when you first make your garment, there's less adjustments that you need to do and no major ones. So uh, that is definitely a class you're not gonna wanna miss if fitting garments has ever been a struggle for you. And it's a super interactive class, which is the best part. Any projects that you're working on or projects you want to work on, uh, you'll be bringing those to the class and we'll be going over how to apply this technique to your specific project. So the technique itself will be the same for each and every project in how it's applied, but when we can apply them to your immediate project and you can easily understand how to implement it in the project and have some quick success with it, then it will make so much more sense when you move forward and do it on your own on the next project and the next project. So it's really, really worthwhile to be at a live class that you can get your questions answered immediately and you can move forward in your project. And when you're over on the registration page, you'll also see that I've added some great bonuses. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one class with me valued at $175. So you won't want to pass that up. Uh, it will be a time for us to actually go even more in depth into your projects. What are maybe the biggest fitting struggles that you have and how you can easily uh, work with that and get your garments to fit you the way you really want them to. And there's also another bonus. So uh, check that out there, the neckline masterclass. There's all sorts of great information in that class that you'll get the recording of as well. And that'll kind of get you moving forward, give you some more tips and techniques for adjusting uh, the neck shoulder area and adjusting the style design. So once you have your perfectly fitted patterns, you can adjust little details and it will uh, totally change the look of, of the garment. And then you can quickly and easily um, move forward in creating your own perfect wardrobe. So enough about that. Today, we're going to look at recreating a garment or an object that you already have. So I'm going to be showing you how to copy a pattern, some quick tips for um, recreating a pattern from something you already have. So this is a little children's toque. And quite frankly, this is the best kids toque that I've ever owned. It stays on their head, they don't pull it off. And it just, it's so nice because it keeps their ears warm and it keeps their necks warm. You won't necessarily want to put a scarf on uh, your one-year-old or uh, my three-year-old still wears this and he loves it. He's been wearing it, yeah, since he was about one. And I wanted to make another one for my other little guy uh, so that he can have one too. And I'm going to clean this pattern up after I've uh, kind of copied it and then I'll be sending it out in another workshop Wednesday and doing a video tutorial about how to sew it. So this would be a really great kind of Christmas present. I'll get it out to you before Christmas, uh, enough time to, to make some of your own if you want. But the first thing we're gonna do here is I've turned it inside out. So because this toque is fully lined, it's two layers, we still don't have the seam allowance exposed even though it's inside out. So if you were doing like a tank top or a t-shirt, you'd have your, your seam allowance exposed. So you could trace right along your seam allowances. I'm gonna trace my seam allowance distance away from this uh, toque just so that I have the full size that I need to actually create the object today. The next thing you're gonna wanna do when you lay it down is fold the garment where we have our doubling uh, the design. So if it is a t-shirt, you're gonna line up the side seam so that you have uh, the front, both right and left, and the back, both right and left. 
in the case of like a tank top or a t-shirt, you'll be able to line up the body, but you won't be able to really copy the straps right away. You'll trace, oh, just jolt my camera here. Uh, you'll be able to trace all around the bottom and then move it so that you can then trace the, the straps on both the front and the back of the panel. But however the garment is, you really just want to make sure that you lay it so that the uh, mirrored image, image version that you actually have the fold line on the axle of where uh, it starts to copy so that you can lay it again on your fold, on your fabric. We're going to create just a straight line here on the front without adding any extra seam allowance. So this is going to be the line, it's bulging out a little bit from the being pulled when it's stitched. So this is going to be the fold or laying on the fold and I'm just going to extend this a little bit so that I can just trace it with my intended seam allowance already on it. So then I can just kind of take out that step. So now that I have my fold line uh, and my garment here, the, is exactly folded in half. I don't have to rotate it at all. I can just simply trace it at a distance of the seam allowance I'm intending to use. So I'm doing a pretty narrow seam allowance here because when I put this together, I'm gonna use my serger and uh, it has a pretty, pretty narrow stitch. So here we have a corner I'm going to make sure that it's, I'm copying it at a, at a right angle, how I go up into it so that I don't have a point at the back. I want it to be a smooth transition. And then I'm just going to continue up and around. So as you can see, this is a very, very easy, easy kind of pattern to trace. But there are a few other things that you do want to think about as well if you're wanting to recreate a garment from an existing garment. And the main one is the fabric choice. So whenever you recreate a garment, if you create it in a different type of fabric, a different weight, a different amount of stretch, uh, it will drape differently and it will fit differently. So the original garment might fit you 100% perfect, which is why you wanna trace it Although every time you make a new garment, you always have the opportunity to uh, do something new, whether it's a different adjustment in the neckline, I'm gonna just round the tip off a little bit, whether it's an adjustment in the shape of the neckline, whatever that adjustment may be. But if you do have a different fabric, smooth this out a little bit, the fit is going to be different. So here we go, I've traced it one to one. I know now that this is a fold line, so I'm just gonna jot that down. Fold. And I'm just gonna quickly put my grain line so it's quite, the grain line will be straight from that folded edge. So I'll just quickly put my grain line access in here so that I know the grain line and I've already added the seam allowance. So this pattern is actually already ready to go. If, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a t-shirt or something that you can't lay perfectly flat, then after you've traced the proportions or the area of the garment that you can, then simply move it along and flatten it out uh, so that you can trace any types of straps or arm side, that type of thing. Now you may be thinking, well, that was a really easy pattern to uh, copy. There wasn't a lot to it. And there really isn't a lot to copying a pre-existing garment. Of course, the more pieces you have, this pattern was simply a one pattern piece, uh, a little toque. The more pieces you have, the more patterns you have, the more time it's gonna take, the more things that you'll need to just double check. Stitch lines, for example. We don't have any adjoining stitch lines like from the front and the back. You'll wanna double check that after you've traced them, they're the same length, so that when you go to stitch the garment together, it will piece together properly. 
but I also really wanted to bring home in this tutorial the importance of the fabric and we did chat about it a little bit already but things you'll want to think about other than the weight and the drape and the stretch is uh, just when you pick a different fabric so if you want to go with a different fabric if you're going with a fabric that has less stretch than the original one then you may want to scale it up a little bit bigger so you may not need to blow up the whole thing but you may need a, just a little bit more circumference uh, room in in the garment you won't necessarily need more length but more kind of circumference room more ease in it whenever you're sewing anything if you follow me i always talk about aligning the sewing variables and the fabric is such a big uh, player in the end fit and comfort of your garment that it often gets forgotten because we think everything has to do with the shape of the pattern and how it fits but the fabric plays a really big part especially when we are recreating pre-existing garments because we create them exactly in the same size so we assume that they're going to fit but if you've adjusted your fabric in any way it may fit looser or it may fit tighter so keep that in mind when you are choosing your pattern well i look forward to actually cleaning this pattern up and sending it out to you and doing uh, the other tutorial and then when both of my little kiddos run around uh, the yard with their little pointed hoods uh, that is going to be exciting too that brings us to the end of this episode of workshop wednesday i do hope you found some helpful tips and are starting to see how important the fabric is to the actual fit of your garment as well and don't forget to sign up for tomorrow's class and if you're watching this video after thursday then uh, leave me a comment send me an email uh, get in contact with me and tell me if you would like to be part of a future class and i'll try to get another date on the schedule as soon as possible until next week happy sewing